Hello friends and welcome to this video. So I would like to talk about coming back to reality. Now this is a beginner's guide I guess to people who have started on their spiritual path, gone to workshops, retreats and it's a question that came up in um, a WhatsApp group chat that I went to a previous um, retreat. So I remember many years ago when I started going to um, workshops and retreats and you're experiencing all this phenomena, psychic awakening, psychic experiences, uh, vivid dreams, um, proof from spirit. Um, reality can become somewhat different and with that um, you don't know how to make sense of the, the old world around you because you are morphing, you are changing, you are evolving. And we're so used to, in England, perhaps coming home, making the dinner, putting on a TV show like EastEnders or Coronation Street or whatever else you watch, um, chatting to some friends, scrolling through Facebook, Perhaps, you know, getting ready for the next day at work, having, you know, nine to five and maybe not a lot of spiritual happenings are, ha you know, occurring like psychic awakening or psychic experiences or deep dreams. And so you're, you're being pull pulled away from that reality. So how to adjust? Um, and this is coming from my own personal experience because I was once like these people or perhaps if you're watching this perhaps you know I was once like yourself many years ago when I first started going to retreats and workshops and you know especially like a long weekend maybe start a Friday finish Monday or late Sunday and so you've got a good two days solid of meditations um, uh, like lots of planned things throughout the workshop day especially a retreat, especially when you stay over somewhere away from your normal environment and there's different foods and different things that you do, you're pulled away from your comfort comfort zone a little bit. Um, so regarding like mediumship, meditation, uh, for, for many years I've been involved in mediumship, um, trance circles, um, home circles, but also attending our body retreats. Um, also going to parts of the world where I experience different ways of living and putting into a spiritual practice. The thing is we're not used to getting up, um, having a shower, having breakfast and then doing like, I don't know, 8am till 6pm of spiritual work, you know, 6-7pm for example. Other retreats I've done in the past, uh, out of body and lucid dreaming retreats that I've hosted or also been to um, in different parts of the world, a lot in London, um, a few other places, the Monroe Institute being one of them also, is that you've got all throughout the day you've got a lot of spiritual practice. I've been to a couple of mediumship retreats too but I find that the lucid dreaming, out of body experience, um, binaural beat workshops tend to be a lot more meditation and at the end of it, at the end of the day, you don't think you're going to sleep after being meditation all day or doing or laying down for an hour and a half or an hour five times a day, you don't think you're probably going to sleep but you do because you're not getting sleep, you're getting rest but you're not falling asleep, your mind is pretty much awake so you'll be surprised how much rest you do get um, and with that you're constantly in the zone, you're constantly tuning in, you're using your, trying to use your psychic abilities or mediumship abilities or trying to have an experience in the dream state and so you're using a lot of mental activity, you're, you're slowly tran, trans, you're, you're progressing your energy into the non-physical and so you're really deeply in that energy you know, you're taken away from the mundane muggle way of life and when you come home you're back in your root, you know, your old routine, you're back at home, probably with your partner, children or pets or your environment where perhaps you are procrastinating or doing things that aren't so spiritual and so it's, it's hard to adjust because you've been in this different world for, for so long. 
So my advice to you is just take some breaks, go back into the meditations and retreats, come back into your home, and eventually, at some time in your life, I don't know how long it takes, it takes a little bit of time to adjust, but you find that you're living your life in such a way that it is just the norm now. Um, for me, I get a lot of psychic dreams. There's peaks, I'm trying to record my peaks at the moment with psychic activity and premonitions and things that happen. They're not major, major events. Um, sometimes they are, but that's rare. But sometimes it's just silly little things that don't make sense to me. But if I reach out to a Facebook friend or my partner or a friend and I explain that, oh, I've had this experience, do you remember anything? Sometimes, 10% of the time, they remember something but a lot of the time they don't. And what does that go to show? I don't know. Um, regarding the mediumship stuff, when you're training with your clairsentient, clair, your clairsentient, your clair audience, your clair, sorry, your clair audience, your clairvoyance, your clair tangents, um, all these clairsentients uh, that you have in the mediumship realm, then you're, you're trying to tune in all the time. So when you come back to your normal world, <laughs> your apartment, your home, your renting accommodation, then you're questioning life. And that's, that's okay, that's really fine to do so. Question as much as you want, but eventually, the more you do this sort of work, it just becomes normal. You know, you, you might wake up from a dream state, remember a bunch of dreams, and then, it, I mean, this is me, um, you know, I have a shower and then I start tuning into my day um, and things sometimes come to mind, sometimes not, but it's just a progression. That's all it is. Um, usually at retreats, you find that the food is somewhat healthier than what you have at home. It's usually a lot more home cooked or a lot more salads, um, something that's a bit more alkaline. There are a lot of retreats out there that offer a lot of alkaline food, like alkaline soups, and I know it could be like a, a broth, or it could be like vegan food, and people's way of eating is completely different. So you might find that when you get back home, your preferences of food, your diet, might change, because as you train, as you evolve your, your mind and your body, um, your, your tastes start to change, you know, you start to craving more high vibratory, high vibration foods. When I say that, it's just living foods. So, you know, perhaps you go home and you cook food and you fry food, you have meats, you have dairy, nothing wrong with any of that. Depends on the body type and what you wanna eat. But again, when you go to a lot of uh, retreats, usually now they're mainly vegetarian, so they suit everybody. Um, there are, you know, when you attend a retreat, people say about any, any um, things that are like allergies, things you can't eat. So, you know, the, the workshop or retreat host will do their best um, to provide that for you. And I've done that too. You know, I try to make everything vegan so it suits everybody. People miss meat, but at the end of the day, it's only a short time of your life. You, you're just with me or um, a teacher for a short time to... Um, to just have a different way of eating for a little bit and taking out your comfort zone. Maybe you're used to really heavy, dense carb foods, you know, pastas, breads, um, potatoes. That's great in a short, in a small amount, but um, it's, it's, it's good to challenge yourself on your, your beliefs and your conditioning and just see what it's like for a bit. Different subject completely, but that you can go into detox when you're doing these very clean diets your body is so acidic and toxic from all the other bad foods <laughs> that we consume that aren't really foods at all um, lots of fats lots of sugar lots of salt lots of preservatives lots of e numbers uh, lots of pesticides all things that don't really make it a food. I mean, I've got an avocado there looking at me right now. I'm looking forward to that later. I've got a nice fresh lemon I got from, from the supermarket. Don't know what I'm gonna do because I'm only here for a short while. But I'm looking at that and thinking, oh, really, I'm looking forward to having that later. And 
a post to years ago, many years ago, when I enjoyed going out and having a McDonald's or a KFC, but this is going back over 20 years ago. Um, you know, I don't miss those foods. So you try, you know, progressing back into your old way of life, your old patterns, your old routines, eventually they will start to make a bit apparent where you're like, okay, I'm gonna change things. And this is the good thing about traveling and exploring new, new ways and living out of your usual home environment because you learn new ways of eating, you learn new ways to do things. It's good to travel because you learn how to, you know, make things better around you. You see different homes, different apartments, and you think, oh, that's a good idea. And you implement that in your daily life if you can. But going back to the energy side, is that we're so used to our mundane, muggle, very grounded, non-sentient life that we're not really in tune with. So when you go back home, things just start to be more clearer. And that's good because when you're taking out your, your environment, you can see things that are different. It's like when I travel, I come back to the retreat, the kitchen there, I always notice these dark beams when I come back and I think, oh God, they've always been that dark. <laughs> and I know that's a problem because if, I know if they are painted, it'll brighten up the space. So um, they've always been dark, but it just goes to show how different spaces are and you can ch have changes. I know I'm, I'm digressing a little bit, but going back to the energy side, it takes some time for your body and your mind to adjust. People who are very new to spirituality, who are new to workshops, might feel very, very tired at the beginning. I felt this at the beginning stages of my journey. Um, I remember training with my mentor, my, my teacher, who taught me a lot about healing and we had a conveyor belt of people turning up for healing on a Wednesday on, on the retreat. It was a week long retreat. And I think on the, it might be in the Friday actually, on after like four days, the fourth day, we had a conveyor belt of people to heal. And I was okay, I was fine. I was feeling a bit tired, more than usual. But it wasn't until I went to um, retreats, uh, like retreat uh, festivals and I was doing healing. I remember this one particular year, it must have been in 2007, I think. And um, yeah, I was doing a lot of healing. And um, during that time, um, I had a lot of clients, a lot of people for healing. I was giving a lot of my energy. And after I felt quite tired, quite drained, and it took a lot of my energy out basically um, so <laughs> sorry got a distraction there's someone struggling with the door um, it took a lot of my energy and then it takes some time to get used to um, that different way of energy of giving because it's like going to the gym if you haven't been to the gym for a long long time you're going to struggle um, you're not going to be as strong as you used to so it's like, you, you know, you don't have to go to the gym every single day. Go a couple of times a week, that's optimum. It's like doing healing. Yeah, you have healing clients, not throughout the day, every single day. You need to give yourself a break. This is another thing about people who go into things full time, that if um, you're overworking, doing therapy, and you're giving healing, and a lot of healing, um, you can be draining yourself, like, a lot. So it's important to have a good balance. Another thing as well, if you are looking to get into more clients spirit spiritually and do therapies, I really recommend having a part-time job as well as doing your current work. Although you're probably new to spirituality, if you're watching this video and you know what it's like to for a, for a beginner, people want to you know, they experience these therapies and sound healings and uh, other things, and then suddenly they've, they've got a title on themselves and it's, okay, have they trained? Fair enough, they might have done some training. Great, we're all healers. There's no young age when we can be a healer or old age. When a baby 
uh, falls over and bumps its head or hits its toe, it cries. But who heals that part of the body? You know, the bruising. It's not the mother, it's not the father, it's the baby. The baby does the healing. It heals itself. And so there is no young age to when you can heal, but you have to have the knowledge and experience you know, the know-how, how to look after clients, how to, how to give, you have to be certificated for insurance, for example, but don't get ahead of yourselves. The important thing is to be on your journey and to stay focused and headstrong and um, don't, don't divert off your path, you know. I'm still learning myself. I've been doing this work for many years, possibly over 25 years now, I've been uh, doing spiritual work, spiritual therapy, introduced to it at a very, very young age from my father, um, but he never was really a big teacher to me. I guess he just showed, he just gave me a CD and I I just felt an intuitively intuitive calling for myself to do that. So I've had a lot of experience myself over the years and I'm a bit rusty when it comes to mediumship and um, readings and healing, but it doesn't mean I can't do it. It's just, it's tapping into that energy that you've once got. But if you don't keep it up, you're not strong, you know? It's like going to the gym. Yeah, you have the body mass, you have the, the muscle memory to do so, but you're not as strong as you were many years ago, but you can get back into it much faster than somebody who has never worked out at all. They won't have the, the muscle mass. I'm not huge, I'm not massively mus muscular, but I know if I was to train more, it's not about size, it's about strength, it's about being agile and strong. So the same thing goes to spirituality on workshops, you know, it's very new to you in the beginning, be patient with yourself, baby steps, because you don't want to drain yourself. It can take a lot of your energy, uh, emotionally and spiritually, and I've seen people for, throughout the many years who aren't used to meditation and doing a lot of this, a lot of spiritual work, they become very, very tired, very, very fast. But what makes a great teacher and a great a uh, pupil, a great client, a great um, team member within within those circles is having the right diet, the right attitude and everything, which we'll cover another video. But how to cope with the changes of energy, going to spiritual retreats and workshops, then coming back home, is having a break from it for a little bit. You don't have to continue as hard as you were in the workshop. Do a little bit here and there and build up slowly and have breaks. You know, it's good to meditate every day and do a spiritual practice, but if you're doing it throughout the whole day, it can be very tiring. Um, if you're not used to it at the beginning, there are people who meditate for many, many hours throughout the day. And if you've heard before, like Tibetan monks or whatever, they can be in deep meditation for, for a long periods of time, but that takes many years to get to. Like, I haven't got into a, a serious um, meditation routine for years and I couldn't hold doing five or six hours. Um, an hour is probably max for, for me, but, you know, I know I can gradually get up to that. And it's baby steps. It's energy building up and that's what it's about. Be patient with yourself, be headstrong, be gentle on yourself and things will progress. You're on this journey, you're on this path, well done. Congratulations for whatever practice you are doing, um, whatever it is, but just take some time out for you and have a break from doing that, that side. And it's okay to go out and enjoy a, a walk in nature, sit down and watch a movie, have a bit of a break from the spiritual side, but come back to it in your own time. Anyway, I hope this has helped. Maybe it hasn't, but if it has, please leave a comment down below uh, or message me. It'd be good to hear from you. Anyway, speak to you again. Have a great day.